morning, PSA Posse. How are we doing? It's Sunday morning, people. Sunday morning. And you can think of me as your Sunday morning triple espresso wake-up call. Because I have a question for you, ladies and gentlemen. Why should anyone pay you to speak? Thank you, sir. <laughs> if you sit back in your chair, I'll plug it in. <laughs> Same heckle from Comedy Night. I should have used the Rob Brown version instead. So, at the PSA, we speak about speak more and speak better. And, of course, being a good speaker is very, very important. But if the only person who's seen your amazing keynote is your lounge curtains, that's where I practice, and you're not being paid to speak, you're not going to have much of a speaking business. To paraphrase what Randy Gage said at the NSA conference in 2007, if you're a motivational speaker and you can't motivate people to book you, you're not going to be doing very much motivating, are you? <laughs> we have to be able to market and sell ourselves successfully if you want a speaking business. Simple definition, marketing the identification and creation of a potential client and selling, turning a potential client into a paying client. Both are obviously vitally, vitally important. You may have heard the song from Cabaret, Money Makes the World Go Round. Money doesn't make the world go round. Selling makes the world go round because in your business, my business, anybody's business, nothing's going to happen until somebody sells something. Here's the brutal reality. If you can't close enough sales, you are going to have to close your speaking business. Just in case you're kicking off your hangover from the gala dinner, let me just repeat that. If you can't close enough sales, you're going to have to close your speaking business. Well, what does it take to market and sell yourself successfully? In the time I've got this morning, I can't give you all the answers. So instead, what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask you six questions. Six questions that if you can answer them, you will have the foundations for being able to market and sell yourself successfully. Now, when you first hear these questions, you might think, well, they sound a bit basic. And I make no apologies for that fact. Because if you want to have a successful business, you have to become brilliant at the basics. It's a concept I learned when I was studying traditional Japanese karate, a style called Wadarayu. And I'd reached a reasonably senior level. And I was invited to go to an advanced karate class with 8th Dan Sakagami Sensei. And I was so excited, advanced. I'm going to do like ninja death touch and knocking people out with the power of my mind. And anybody who's done traditional Japanese karate will tell you every single karate class starts with the basic techniques. And the advanced class was no different. The first hour of a three-hour advanced class was going over and over and over the basic techniques. And I should have known better, but I think I was getting a bit bored and frustrated and I had a face probably like a smacked backside. And Sakagami Sensei noticed and called the class to a halt. Yummy! And he strode up and stood in front of me and stared into my eyes. Well, like that, actually, because he's only that big. And he said to me, do you find basics boring? No, Sensei, I lied. <laughs> <laughs> and he glared at me and said, if you build a house on weak foundations, it will fall over. Weak basics, weak karate. Strong basics, strong karate. And he said, do you understand? Yes, I said, truthfully. And then he said, wax on, wax off. <laughs> No, no, he didn't. I've just, I've just, I've just made, I've made that better. So, what do we need to be able to sell successfully? First of all, we need a viable product. And in our world, that is your speaking topic. So, here are three questions you need to be able to answer about your speaking topic so you have a viable product. First of all, knowledgeable. Are you a genuine, knowledgeable expert, an authority in your topic? If I Google you, what's your internet footprint? Are you, do you really, really know your stuff? It is not good enough to have read one or two more books than your audience. Second thing, do you enjoy it? Yes, we do need to be passionate and enjoy it. Because if you get good, 
you will get rebooked. I have been rebooked 47 times in the last six years by the same client to deliver the same two-day negotiation seminar. I did one last month, I've got one next month, I've got another one in December, and I look forward to it every single time. And perhaps the most important, is it commercially viable? Are there other speakers being paid to speak on the topic? That's good. A competition is not a bad thing. Competition shows you there's a viable market. As the saying goes, just because you found a gap in the market, it doesn't mean there's a market in the gap. It has to be a viable product. So, then, let me try out a couple of mine uh, by way of illustration. So, sales, transformation, negotiation. Knowledgeable. Do I know my stuff? Well, I've been doing it at the sharp end for 30 years, so I think I get a tick. Enjoyable, yes, I told you, and as you heard, viable, 80 to 90% rebooking rate. Ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. Oh yes, people, Hazel Dean, the sales machine, is in the house. <laughs> Stand at front of stage, adopt guru posture, and gaze at audience with arrogant air. So let me try the follow your heart. Follow your heart and the money will follow. Here's something I am absolutely passionate about. I am weird. I love snakes. Fascinated. I've had them as pets all the time. This is what I do for fun. Okay. You've heard having a tiger by the tail. That's a king cobra by the tail. I love them. I think they're amazing. I'd love to share my passion and enthusiasm for them with more people. So let's try it out. Knowledgeable. Well, actually, compared to the gentleman who taught me how to handle venomous snakes, I'm an enthusiastic amateur, and that isn't good enough. Enjoyable? Yes, passion, 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 passion. Is it viable? Uh -uh. Yeah, not a chance. Has anyone in the room? Please let me know, because I'd love to do it. Has anyone had a phone call? Please, can I book you to come and speak about snakes at our annual sales conference? It's just not, it's just not going to happen. So... When you've got a viable product, then we need to answer some questions about you as a speaker. So here's the answer, the questions you need to be able to answer for your prospective clients. Why should I book you? Okay, you've fallen off a mountain. So what? You have overcome the adversity of an ingrowing toenail. So what? People, please, the clients don't care about you and your story. They care about the benefits you're going to bring to their organization. So what are they? And then why only you? What makes you different? Jeff Ram would say, what makes you stand out? Why should I book you rather than another speaker? What's your differentiation? If you go to my website, you'll see my introductory video. And it says something like, you need to be aware. I need to warn you. I am different to the other speakers out there. I don't just trot out the same old shallow motivational rah-rah as everyone else. Everything I talk about is based on research and facts. For example, the fact that what you've been told about having a positive mental attitude is wrong. The what you've been told about the power of setting goals is wrong. And the fact that billionaires with a B don't set goals, they do something entirely different. And I'm the only speaker in the world who tells his audiences that Roger Bannister contrary to popular opinion, did not break the four-minute mile barrier. By the way, en passant, as they say in PSA Yorkshire, <laughs> if any of those comments have made you a little bit curious, please remember that if you instill a state of curiosity in someone's brain, they become very, very suggestible. So, third question. By the way, is anyone... Does anyone want to know about the Roger Bannister thing? Yeah. Show of hands, who wants to know about the Roger Bannister? Well, you'll have to book me to speak then. <laughs> and the third point, what is the most important thing that the client should remember about you? Because the final decision to book you will probably take place at a meeting where you're not there. And maybe when the meeting planner or the organiser has to answer their boss's question, so why should we book him or her? What drops out of their mouth has to be your most powerful, compelling benefit and differentiator. And you have to plant that in the customer's mind in the first place. 
Now, when we think about benefits, many of you will be familiar with uh, Donald Kirkpatrick's four levels of learning evaluation. It's used to measure the effectiveness of, of training programmes, for example, and Jack Phillips' fifth level. I think we can use this as like a hierarchy of benefits. And the higher up the hierarchy you go, the more likely you are to get booked. So, level one, reaction. Are they going to have a good time? Are they going to enjoy it? On the happy sheets, yes? Level two, learning. What are they going to learn as a result of you interacting with them and being with their organisation? Level three, behaviour. How are they going to be behaving differently after your speech or workshop than they are before? Then, getting serious now, what results can the client expect to get as a result of the learning and behaviour improvements? And then the fifth and most superior level, ROI, return on investment. If you can prove to clients that, say, for every £10,000 they invest in negotiation skills training, you will return them a minimum £100,000 cost saving or profit increase, you will find yourself being booked repeatedly 47 times. Return on investment. You're not a speaker, you are a deliverer of results for the clients. They don't care about you, they don't care about your speech, what they care about is the results that they will get from that. That's the harsh reality, thank you. So, we all want to go to new heights in our speaking businesses, yes? That's why you're all here. You want to you wanna fly to a higher level. In the novel The Song of Solomon by Toni Morris, there's a great line from one of the characters in the book, and it goes like this. If you want to fly, you've got to give up the shit that weighs you down. Now, there might be a couple of things that are weighing us all down. One of them is, I'm not very good at sales and marketing. <laughs> I'm not very good at sales and marketing. Is that serving you in any way at all? Look, I, there's a few of them in the room, but if you look at the sales and marketing speakers, with, apart from me, they're not that clever. No, we're not. I'm joking. I'm joking. It's not that difficult if you get the basic foundation in place, yeah? So just drop that. It's not, it's not helping you. And I think the other thing that's maybe weighing us down is our egos. Now, it might be expected in a profession like speaking that oh, there are some very large and sometimes, paradoxically, some quite fragile egos around in our profession. And to overcome its sort of inherent insecurities, one of the games that the ego constantly plays is comparison. Have I spoken more than you? Do I earn more or less money than you? Have I spoken in more or less countries than you? Have I got more or less Twitter followers than you? Is my clout score higher or lower than you? How much time and energy do we waste in this constant game of comparison? Now, I'm not saying don't be inspired by, learn from other people, take what they've got, adapt it and apply it to your own speaking business. That's the purpose of the PSA. But that's very, very different to this constant egoic thing. Perhaps the only person we should be comparing ourselves to is ourselves. Is my speaking business better this year than it was last year? And how's it going to be better next year? Take that time and energy away from the comparison and focus it, focused action, on your own speaking business. Don't worry about the grass being greener on the other side. Focused action on your own business. Grow your own grass. You'll be so busy, you won't have time to wonder what anyone else is doing. And maybe just a thought that sometimes the grass that you've been told about only appears to be greener because it's fertilised with a bit of bullshit. <laughs> the great thing about this business 
is you can have your own speaking model. You can create a speaking business that is right for you. It's your business, it's your model, it suits your lifestyle, your income aspirations, what you want to do. Your business, not what someone else tells you your speaking business should be, it's your business. So create your own speaking business. Decide on your model, answer those six questions, and take focused action. Take action from what you've learned at Mega. The last thing I want to say, focused action, focused action, focused action, and I look forward to seeing every single person in this room flying to new heights of success, happiness, fulfillment, and prosperity. Ladies and gentlemen, good luck and good selling. Thank you.